When the beans arrive, that's when I guess the magic happens from Caldi's side of the coin. You start to roast them and see what flavors come out. I think letterpress in the process is a lot the same. Sending each one through, trying to make each one as equal to the previous one. Looking at that all across a line. It feels purposeful, you know? It feels like something that is meant to be. There's such a connection there that's really hard to put into words, quite frankly. It's that similar idea or practice of following that process through to something that is now tangible. And once you see it, it makes sense. I started roasting back in 2012, and that happened to be the year we rolled out Tis the Season. So I was part of it from the beginning. There was like one interview and then two interviews that we would do and we went through, and then ultimately uh, the hiring team, uh, the roasters essentially, uh, landed on me and I got the position and I've been doing it ever since. Being able to roast coffee was really, it was a game changer. It was a way to think about this industry in a different light. The attitude and the excitement about coffee was super contagious. It's inspiring to work in those kind of situations. Tyler had a passion for the history of coffee. He was always giving me books and like little nuggets of information of things that would further my knowledge, but also maybe get me thinking about it in another in a new light so that I would have to do a little bit of research myself. Having that kind of knowledge that's like history-based as well as future-focused, respecting the mistakes and the successes of our history, industry-wide, and how we can grow that. And Tyler really wanted to continue to grow that. You know, my family, we bought Caldi's in 2005. You know, I, I just started hanging around the roastery. I was still in college even. And I mean, I was just fascinated by the whole process. And first cupping, just, you know, mind, mind blowing at some level and tasting flavors and the noises, the sounds, the smell of the coffee. I mean, it was just a, I mean, it just opened my eyes to a whole new world. I'm helping build, and I've been helping build memories as to what people think Caldi's tastes like. Tis the season a perfect example of that. People come back and ask for that, that profile, that, that what was in that coffee all the time. Tyler explained to us you know, what the, the idea about it was, that it was a look at a very traditional blend of coffee, uh, the first blend of coffee in a lot of ways. Mocha Java is like the original coffee blend. I mean, Mocha was the port in Yemen. Yemen was the original coffee origin where it was commercially traded. So like all throughout Europe, that was one of the first coffees that really got traded. And then also in Indonesia. So Java being an island in Indonesia, those were two of the very first you know, commercially available coffees in the world at some level. So naturally at some time they were blended together because that's what was available. And thus Mocha Java blend was born. So I just thought it was such a cool story. We could do something, bring it back, make it unique. The very first blend was a Sumatran coffee, uh, that classic, you know, tobacco, vanilla, oaky flavors, heavier flavors, but then with the natural Ethiopia, which was, you know, vibrant, chocolatey, strawberry, those blueberry punchy notes, but bring those coffees together. And I mean, literally one of the most complex coffees we have all year. And our whole idea was making like an amped up, cleaner, bolder, you know, mocha java. I think coffee's nostalgic when, I mean, it's like this for me, you taste a coffee, it reminds you of a coffee you tasted 10 years ago. And we hope that, you know, the tis the season is that for, for our customers every day too. So, I mean, just a cool opportunity to showcase coffee and, and what we do and, and uh, you know, have something we could do every year. We still have you know, the, the first tis the season bag at home um, from the first year we ever did that. And 
it's hard to believe that 10 years later we're still putting those out um because they're and they, they're just so pretty the packaging's so pretty At the time, once we came up with the blend, um, we're a coffee forward company, so the blend came first, and then we were discussing how to best package that blend. I've been familiar with Firecracker Press um, for a couple of years, just being in the art scene in St. Louis, so I thought we could just reach out to them and see if they'd be interested in doing it more or less. We got along really well, nerded out on typography, nerded out on letterpress stuff. Luckily, Eric was excited about trying it out, so the rest is history now. You know, Firecracker Press is a letterpress print shop, and letterpress printing, for me, is a perfect mix of my interest in graphic design and designing, but also handcrafted, handmade items. Um, taking the digital portion, the, the, uh, the original drawing to the digital, and then the digital back out to the analog is really something that uh, I find fascinating. When you've got an idea in the beginning and you want to see it produced into some sort of tangible form, it's hard to know exactly what the tangible form is going to be. We can talk about that notion of creating something from nothing. I think Tis the Season, that first year, was creating something from nothing. The letterpress process really starts with the beginning, the, you know, the birth of creation. Uh, building something or making something from scratch. Nothing was there before, a blank canvas or a blank sheet of paper. And then it's our responsibility to fill that with something, you know, to make something out of that. That can be extremely daunting. Over 20 years, I, I think we've found that if we kind of hang in the pocket, you know, we stay with it, make that mark into something else, push it this way, push it that way, then eventually it starts to really blossom. Um, and so some of that anxiety or the uh, uh, fear about tackling a blank canvas kind of melts away. Maybe some would say that the outcome isn't necessarily the biggest <laughs> part of the whole project. You know, it's the process. It's the relationship that we're into, you know? Um, it's talking with Caldies in the beginning and uh, working, negotiating out some certain aspects. And then given the privilege of sort of retreating into our studio and the responsibility of, uh, of doing that and then emerging at the end and saying, here you go guys, <laughs> here it is, what do you think? Um, I think that's really special. But I think something that we try to do with every project we work on here at Firecracker is deep dive into that history. I think history is everything. But when we can take printing history and apply that with coffee history, two things that just go back into the beginning days of humanity, you know, like, it's just like so rich. Maybe that comes through to people when they pick up the product on the shelf. Maybe they don't know it directly, but I think spiritually, I think emotionally, uh, there's a real connection there. One of the aspects we've always really wanted with the Tis the Season packages is you need no wrapping paper. You can present this to somebody at their desk. You can put this under the tree, in a stocking, at home, wherever, and it serves as its own present or its own wrapping. Uh, just as it is. Eric and I, I emailed a couple times just about honestly setting up a meeting to discuss it. And then we set up a meeting and the only thing I said to him was, these are the colors and a Nutcracker theme. And that was it. Two of those tones were very classical colors, classic holiday time colors. It's sort of like rich green and rich red. Uh, which really reminded me of some of those old classic Christmas time, holiday time traditions. 
um, and I had no idea what to expect. Like, I was thinking more like Nutcracker elements, like patterns from buttons or clothes or something like that. But it gave us an opportunity to dive into that history a little bit of the Nutcracker. Originally, we're attracted to the icon of a Nutcracker's face. All the action happens right there, right? It was secondary that we could then maybe do something with paper that would allow us to actually open the mouth like you do a real Nutcracker. And when that kind of like sparked, we were like, okay, this is, this is it. And then when I saw what he had actually came up with, like a actual Nutcracker, it was just, like, I mean, obviously I think I'm impressed with what Eric does every single year, but this one, I think he really nailed it. It's just fun too, which I think everybody needs a little fun after the past few years, so that helps too. You never know from Firecracker's standpoint if it's gonna fly with Kali's standpoint. And, you know, in that original presentation, just seeing everybody's faces, having the same kind of like <gasps> moment that we had when it all came together on paper. We've taken those original colors that really gave us the inspiration point and we've twisted all those, you know? <laughs> like, it's not really true uh, green. It's like a really muted green. It's not that classic uh, Christmas red. It's kind of like a muted red or a pink. Um, and in those regards, uh, sort of taking everything and flipping it on its head a little bit. It makes sense with that original coffee blend, I think, you know, taking two things and kind of putting them together and seeing what happens. And then you start reading the story and then you see little Easter eggs that we've left on the package or whatever. Then you drink the coffee, you know, and then you're like, oh, this is an entire experience. That interaction, I think, is what really great art is about. I think good things in life give you those kind of rewards where they bring you in and then they keep giving you and giving you and giving you. And um, I think that's what we're getting with Tis the Season.